Welcome to the Spirit Gathering Teleconference. Today is March 20th, 2017, and my name is Sally Ekrab. Our topic this evening is being present with loving presence. We are so glad that you've joined us. We are recording this call so that people who could not be here tonight can listen in. Please press either your phone's mute button or star six to mute your line and to keep the line quiet. This evening we are going to meet as a conversational council. So you may speak at any time, only taking care to let the current speaker speak before current speaker finish before you begin and I will open the forum for sharing later and at that point you unmute your line and when you are complete please reactivate the mute feature. So tonight, let's take a moment now to get settled, to center ourselves, to let go of the events of this day, and begin to enter the deeper, sacred space within ourselves. Now let us imagine that we are joining together sacred heart to sacred heart with every other person on this call right now. Now let us imagine that we are joining together in a circle with a light or flame or fire in the center. Imagine a spoke of light coming from the center of the circle to your heart. And for each person on the call tonight, we're listening in after. Now we are connected, sacred heart to sacred heart. Now let us set our intentions. We listen to one another with compassion and curiosity. We ask for what we need and offer what we can. We deepen our connection with one another and the divine. May this sharing serve us, our communities, and the planet. And so it is. So this evening, I chose the topic of being present with loving presence because to a great degree, that is what I have been working on for quite a while now, and particularly with my meditation group work. Welcome. Glad to join us this evening. Hi, this is Nancy Johansson. Hi, Nancy. So if you can go ahead and press the star six button to mute your line, that will keep it free for the recording. Thank you. So with my work, I've been touched by different philosophers, different readings and things, and two special things affected me recently. One was the movie that I saw of Loving Vincent, and it called me to question whether the greatness of this artist's work came from his connection to loving presence. And the other thing that struck me is taking a class 
and getting to know the work of Eckhart Tolle, and specifically with the book Stillness Speaks. So I wanted to read excerpts from that book this evening that I felt directly related to this sense of loving presence and how we are, in fact, that loving presence. And when I'm done reading, I thought we could take a moment to go into a meditation and then open the forum for sharing. So with that, I'd like to move to the book Stillness Speaks. And in the chapter, Beyond the Thinking Mind, Tola writes, The human mind, in its desire to know, understand, and control, mistakes its opinions and viewpoints for the truth. It says, this is how it is. You have to be larger than thought to realize, however you interpret your life or someone else's life or behavior, however you judge any situation, it is no more than a viewpoint, one of many possible perspectives. It is no more than a bundle of thoughts. But reality is one unified whole in which all things are interwoven, where nothing exists in and by itself. Thinking fragments reality. It cuts it up into conceptual bits and pieces. Whenever you are immersed in compulsive thinking, you are avoiding what is. You don't want to be here. You don't want to be where you are, here, now. There is an aliveness in you that you can feel with your entire being, not just in the head. Every cell is alive in that presence in which you don't need to think. Yet, in that state, if thought is required for some practical purpose, it is there. The mind can still operate, and it operates beautifully when the greater intelligence that you are uses it and expresses itself through it. When you recognize that there is a voice in your head that pretends to be you and never stops speaking, you are awakening out of your unconscious identification with the stream of thinking. When you notice that voice, you realize that who you are is not the voice the thinker, but the one who is aware of it. So this comes from the chapter on egoic self. Knowing yourself as the awareness behind the voice is freedom. And from the chapter the now, I am not my thoughts, emotions, sense perceptions, and experiences. I am not the content of my life. I am life. I am the space in which all things happen. I am consciousness. I am the now. I am. And from the chapter on who you truly are, the truth is you are not somebody who is aware of the tree, the thought, feeling, or experience. You are the awareness or consciousness 
in and by which those things appear. As you go about your life, you can be aware of yourself as the awareness in which the entire content of your life unfolds. You say, I want to know myself. You are the I. You are the knowing. You are the consciousness through which everything is known. And that cannot know itself. It is itself. When you know who you truly are, there is an abiding sense of peace. You could call it joy, because that's what joy is, vibrantly alive peace. It is the joy of knowing yourself as the very life essence before life takes on form. It is the joy of being, of being who you truly are. When you perceive without interpretation, you can then sense what it is that is perceiving. The most we can say in language is that there is a field of alertness, of alert stillness in which the perception happens through you, formless consciousness has become aware of itself. And in the chapter on acceptance and surrender, surrender, one could say, is the inner transition from resistance to acceptance, from no to yes. When you surrender, your sense of self shifts from being identified with the reaction or mental judgment to being the space around the reaction or judgment. It is a shift from identification with form, the thought or the emotion, to being and recognizing yourself as that which has no form, spacious awareness. In the chapter of nature, he writes, bring awareness to many subtle sounds of nature, the rustling of leaves in the wind, raindrops falling, the humming of an insect, the first bird song at dawn. Give yourself completely to the act of listening. Beyond the sound, there is something greater, a sacredness that cannot be understood through thought. You didn't create your body, nor are you able to control the body's function. An intelligence greater than the human mind is at work. It is the same intelligence that sustains all of nature. You cannot get any closer to that intelligence than by being aware of your own inner energy field. By feeling the aliveness, the animating presence within the body. When you perceive nature, let there be spaces of no thought no mind. When you approach nature in this way, it will respond to you and participate in the evolution of human 
and planetary consciousness. You reconnect with nature in the most intimate and powerful way by becoming aware of your breathing and learning to hold your attention there. This is a healing and deeply empowering thing to do. It brings about a shift in consciousness from the conceptual world of thought to the inner realm of unconditioned consciousness. You are not separate from nature. We are all part of the one life that manifests itself in countless forms throughout the universe, forms that are all completely interconnected. When you recognize the sacredness, the beauty, the incredible stillness and dignity in which a flower or a tree exists, You add something to the flower or the tree. Through your recognition, your awareness, nature too comes to know itself. It comes to know its own beauty and sacredness through you. Nature can bring you to stillness. That is its gift to you. When you perceive and join with nature in the field of stillness, that field becomes permeated with your awareness. That is your gift to nature. Through you, nature becomes aware of itself. Nature has been waiting for you, as it were, for millions of years. And from the chapter on relationships. True listening goes far beyond auditory perception. It is the arising of alert attention a space of presence in which the words are being received. The words now become secondary. They may be meaningful or they may not make sense. Far more important than what you are listening to is the act of listening itself. The space of conscious presence that arises as you listen. That space is a unifying field of awareness in which you meet the other person without the separate barriers created by conceptual thinking. And now the other person is no longer other. In that space, you are joined together as one awareness, one consciousness. When you look upon another human being and feel great love towards them, or when you contemplate beauty in nature and something within you responds deeply to it, Close your eyes for a moment and feel the essence of that love or that beauty within you, inseparable from who you are, your true nature. The outer form is a temporary reflection of what you are within in your essence. That is why love and beauty can never leave you, although all outer forms will. (laughs) 
So now I'd like to take about five minutes for us to breathe and connect with our breath, to connect with that I am that has just been so beautifully described. And when we complete with that time, I will then reopen the forum and we can open for sharing on any thoughts you may have. So now we will start.
Welcome back. Take your time easing back into the group. And as I say, this book spoke to me very strongly. And I find on days like today, when I went with a group to a place in nature, I went down to Pearson's Falls, and it's a beautiful nature site run by the Garden Club of Tryon, North Carolina. And we got a tour pointing out the various flowers that were starting to bloom here in the wild. And we walked along this stream and climbed up the side of the mountain until we got to the major place of the waterfalls. And then we sat at that spot, listening to the sounds of nature, the water, the air, the plants, everything that's spoken of in these writings. And for me, it's, it's a continual process of opening myself up to this beautiful resonance that is nature and of which I am a part. And I feel very privileged that I can take in such wonderful experiences and have it be so so potent um, where the vibration of nature is just so intense here. So that's what I'd like to share for now. I very much enjoy hearing other people's thoughts about this as well. So I'm now opening up the circle. Hello? Yes? Hi, this is Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Uh, I wanted to share uh, something with you guys. Uh, one of the most uh, beautiful and profound moments in my life is when it's snowing, and it's so quiet. That, that quiet is just so profound, and yet when you think about it, there's tons and tons of water falling out of the sky, and it would make that profound silence It's just... Yeah, it gets right into my heart, you know, <laughs> that profound silence. It's just such a peaceful thing. Uh, it takes you into some, some fantastic places. Mm. Uh, it's very magical when you think about it, with all the water coming down, but it's making no noise. Yes, it's very magical. I used to live near Central Park, and one of my best, memories of New York is going into Central Park with my dog at night after a snowstorm like we're having tonight. And mm. it's alive with people and dogs and absolutely silent. And yeah. it just looks like a winter wonderland. And you <laughs> knew that on the other side of these walls were buses and cats and all sorts of things making noise. 
but it was completely silent in the park. Yeah, yeah. It's that, that sacred haven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This is Laura. I'll share. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you, Laura. Um, so I really appreciate uh, getting to spend some time with Eckhart Tolle's words. I just read a little bit of his work uh, from the <clears throat> um, Power of Now book, but uh, it was really nice to hear some different topics from the readings. Um, and I, this is, what comes to my mind is, I think, kind of related, but uh, maybe, it, um, uh, you know, kind of a spiritual struggle that I find myself in. And I've talked about this before on, on calls, but living in the city is uh, challenging um, in a number of ways. But... What I kind of meditate on these days, or the, one of the themes I'm kind of, you know, working with on a soul level is this sense that I'll often find myself, you know, coming from home when I, I have to commute a long way into New Jersey through, you know, through the heart of Manhattan. And um, I'll be in a very centered place um, at home before I leave, and then I go out into the world and there's this sense of a like a disjunction and um as if the world is sort of off center a little bit or distorted you know from that place of truth and um i can remember feeling this way as a, a very young child where there was kind of a an innate authenticity um of being and then the world of you know adults or the kind of world is sort of pulls one off of that center it's kind of the world is asleep or deluded or something like that and um mm. i keep kind of coming up against this and it's powerful because it's not really a mental thing it's a very visceral thing and um often i'll have my best intentions to kind of be centered or you know greet everyone with Namaste, but then I'll I'll encounter their energy close up, and it's whoa, you know, it has this charge and a a spin often. And you know, coming from a kind of a Buddhist background, um, the Buddhist tradition doesn't really talk about forces that are antithetical to realizing presence or enlightenment. Uh, I mean, there's the mention of kind of Mara tempting the Buddha, you know, when he was uh, under the bow tree. That's about as far as it goes. But what I am, you know, finding in my own experience are that there are forces there that are actively trying to suppress <laughs> this kind of awakening and centeredness. And so I really, I find myself on a daily basis kind of, you know, slaying dragons or, you know, kind of encountering it's kind of a spiritual battle of how do I maintain center or presence in the midst of this very visceral 
um, kind of force. So, um, you know, it's that, yeah, you know, that's kind of where the rubber meets the road of I can reach that state of presence in at least some degree when I'm kind of in a sanctuary, but then how do I take it on the, on the road and, um, you know, live it in the world. So that's the, that's my cutting edge. So we'll, I'll put the talking stick down <laughs> to help it. Thank you for the opportunity to share that. Thank you. This is Diane, and um, it's interesting from Laura's sharing. I remember being at Luminescence, at Dwayne Packard of Luminescence teaching light body and saying one of the, or radiance actually, and one of the radiance frequencies is intensity. And I specifically remember him saying, you know, it seems counterintuitive that when things are intense, super intense, and he used L.A. as the example, that one can run intensity frequencies in the intensity, and that's what helps to get to that centered place. And it reminds me, or it, it doesn't remind me, it makes me wonder, is that what those beautiful trees in Central Park do? Like, like, th what do they do to modulate the taxis and the buses and the craziness? Because it's all this one consciousness thing, and they're in a different form. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious what, what that experience is for nature. So... That's my curiosity and my sharing. Thanks. Thank you.
Well, I appreciate what both you were and Diane said. It, it makes me wonder, too, about my ability to kind of integrate with the here and now when it is a dynamic energy which is very different from what I'm comfortable with. And um, and it makes me feel very humble as to how much I can actually kind of hold my balance and center in these things. I know it was very interesting to go back to New York after having been away for a year and feel the intensity of walking with the people on the streets and things and going into Central Park and feeling a very intense field of nature and yet very different from what I feel here in Western North Carolina. So it's it's a lot to explore and um, and learn about. So I'd like to take a few minutes now for a checkout where I'd like to invite each of the people here to leave a comment or some kind of closing that feels comfortable for them, and then I can move to formally close our gathering. Um, for me, the, the word that comes up is just a kind of oneness of community. And I welcome each of you to leave your thought as well. Thomas here. I'd like to vote for the harmony frequencies. And I, and I am complete. Thank you. Yeah, this is Laura, and I feel uh, gratitude for being able to gather as a community and want to thank you for hosting this opportunity to share as a group. Yeah, I'm complete. This is Ying. Um, I feel great to hold the space for this special spring day. Thank you. Hi, this is Janine. And I want to thank the other members of the group and uh, for sharing this moment of joy. This is Diane. I feel grateful for this evening of sharing in your program, Sally, and um, being in connection and community. Thank you. This is Gwen. I came in late. My apologies. Um, I'm very grateful for the words that I heard and the opportunity um, to drop back into my own experience of nature uh, and being held there. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. 
the Spirit Gathering Teleconference. The call may be archived as an MP3 at www.tzaddi.org. Phone access to the recording of this call is available until next month's call. For playback of the recording, dial 712-432-1085, access code 990-322-pound key. We hope you'll join us for our next spirit gathering on April 17, 2018. These calls are hosted by Tazadi, an interspiritual metaphysical organization founded in California in 1964. Tazadi welcomes, nurtures, and supports people in celebrating and more directly experiencing their relationship with the loving presence of the divine. Our programs are open to people of any race, color, or national or ethnic origin. Visit www.tazadi.org to learn more. We will now close with thanks and a blessing. Thanks to Tazadi founders, Amy Keith and Dorothy Blackfinger. Thanks to all of you who have been a part of our community tonight. And thanks to the divine who supports us always, even when we are not aware of it. And I'd like to close with the prayer of light. Love before me, love behind me, love at my left. Love at my right, love above me, love below me, love unto me, love in my surroundings, love to all, love to the universe. Peace before me, peace behind me, peace at my left, peace at my right. Peace above me, peace below me, peace unto me, peace in my surroundings, peace to all, peace to the universe. Light before me, light behind me, light at my left, light at my right, light above me, light below me, light unto me. Light in my surroundings, light to all, light to the universe. And I wish you all a good night.